Sunset Overdrive, the recently announced open-world action game from developer Insomniac Studios, is a strange bird indeed. You're constantly bouncing on the roofs of cars, firing off explosive teddy bears, and generally causing havoc and mayhem wherever you go. All this is wrapped up in a colorful, punk rock aesthetic that, as you're about to hear, draws its inspiration from some unlikely sources. Together, the style and substance of Sunset Overdrive makes it a pretty far cry from Insomniac's more recent games, including the Resistance series and Fuse. So why the sudden shift from cover-based shooting to high-flying action? Why jump from the apocalypse to the awesome apocalypse? To find the answer, and to learn more about the game, we travel to Insomniac headquarters to speak with the developers themselves and take a behind-the-scenes look at the making of Sunset Overdrive. Yeah, I think the first time we pitched this game, uh, it was terrible. It was an epic disaster. Yeah, it was basically, we did a, we did a presentation where we were like, here's what the game's going to be like, but we're not going to get bogged down on any story details. So we're not going to tell you who you're fighting, what you're fighting, how you're fighting, but here's all the stuff that we're really into. Here's like all <laughs> this crazy pop culture mishmash. We Halloween kept, masks. We kept talking about like, like cultural mashups, and we had yeah, literally slides and slides of vintage uh, vintage Halloween masks yeah. and like Popeye cartoons. Remember Ted got so upset about that Popeye, Popeye cartoon? Com- you can't talk about Popeye to Ted. Yeah. That's, that's uh, what I learned. We've learned over the years not to be afraid of failure. We, we fail all the time, whether it's on a grand scale or a micro scale. And, but the key is never to stop trying different things because then you stagnate and you don't learn from your failures. And certainly on this project, we've tried a lot of things that didn't work. We tried things that maybe some people felt would have been awesome and other people felt like just didn't match the, either the tone or the basic mechanics we were going for. Marcus and Drew, while we were working on Resistance 3, you know, had been talking and, and they had this idea about a game that they wanted to make. And, and, uh, and so that's really what it was. It was just an idea. You know, how would you survive the end times? Once the team at Insomniac had rallied behind a shared vision for the end of the world, or at least the end of Sunset City, they had to actually start making the game. If you read GameSpot's preview for Sunset Overdrive that went up last week, by the way, then you already have a sneak peek at what this game will entail. But in case you missed it, the basics are thus. Energy drinks are evil. Okay, okay, there's more to it than that. As Sunset Overdrive is all about mixing fast-paced traversal with Insomniac's signature gunplay. The result is a game that wants you in constant motion, dispensing death as you hop between grind rails and off of restaurant awnings. However, making all these pieces, the shooting, the rail grinding, the unusually bouncy car roofs, all fit together into one cohesive whole wasn't an easy task. When the game really kind of crystallized, I think for me, was when traversal became, when we started using traversal in the game. Like it just wasn't about walking around the world and kind of, you know, killing a bunch of Odeed. It was about killing Odeed, but doing it in a really stylish fashion. Like, you know, grinding, jumping around and really, you know, looking cool while you're doing it. This is a game where you actually interact with the environment all the time. And so a lot more even than games like Infamous where you interact with the elements by climbing up buildings, but most of the time you're up in the air, you're out doing stuff. Uh, This is a lot more like Tony Hawk where the entire world has to be built with how the gameplay mechanics work. So there there just ends up being so much tied together that that we really couldn't box them up and, and kind of develop them independently. When working on the weapons in Sunset Overdrive, you know, we have to take kind of an approach of looking at a couple different things that take into account how fast the player can move, as well as making sure that they're getting a good experience out of the weapon itself. And so, you know, what that means is we have kind of an aiming system that allows the player to be a little bit looser to make up for the fact of how fast that they're moving. But at the same time, a lot of our weapons have, you know, AOE aspects to handle how fast you can move so you can be a little sloppier, or um, a little bit of auto-targeting or homing to help you be a little bit sloppier so you can move really fast, but you still have to do most of the work and then it gets you that extra 10% of the way there. Um, or we have things that are like status effects, setting groups of dudes on fire or freezing them, things like that to like really help to um, you know, manage the crowd a little bit. We've got more enemies in this game than we've had in any game we've ever released. Yeah, I mean, it is one of those things when you look at the game, you know, some people might, might think that you know, it's like a kid's game you know, because it's so colorful. And, but we wanted to juxtapose that with, with kind of a, a more mature aesthetic. Um, in terms of the tone, in terms of the, you know, we call it a satire. Um, it's not really a comedy game. And, and I think the difference between, you know, a comedy game and a satire is, you know, we had this mantra early on um, where we, we said, okay, 
Don't try to make jokes, make comments. When you embrace irreverence, when you embrace this idea that you're not being uh, bound to real world rules or trying to tell a story that it takes itself completely seriously, then anything's possible. And that's what's been really fun for us on the Ratchet series, for example, and is absolutely a blast for everybody on Sunset Overdrive, because Sunset Overdrive involves this world that isn't playing by our standard rules, where we can take the story in unexpected directions and do some crazy stuff. Armed with its irreverent tone, outrageous weapons, and insane visual style, Sunset Overdrive is shaping up to be a refreshing departure from the studio's more recent, more serious projects. Of course, there's still plenty more to dissect in this upcoming open-world action game, so be sure to stay tuned to GameSpot.com for all the latest updates on the game. <laughs>